Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Daily for Wednesday, June 12th, 2024, or 6 12 24, a fun day for the mathematicians. It's also the 24th Wednesday of the year, the second of four Wednesdays this month, and hashtag National Jerky Day as in the food, not the people, created no surprise by the folks over at Jack's Links to celebrate the history, popularity, and nutritional benefits of all dried meats, not just beef, known as jerky. Not only is it a big day for Jack's Links, but if you've ever been to a Bucky's, I would imagine it's there as well. It's a big day on Wall Street with the Fed announcement and a major economic report. Markets in the green thus far. I'll get into that a bit later, but it's definitely a big day for President Biden making his way to Italy, where the media, by the way, has been brutal to him. He's headed to the G7 summit where he'll have to speak to the world again. It also gives him a chance to distance himself a bit from all that's happening here. This case was about the illegal choices defendant made while in the throes of addiction, his choice to lie on a government form when he bought a gun and the choice to then possess that gun. That's U.S. Attorney David Weiss, the special counsel in Hunter Biden's felony gun case after Hunter was found guilty on all three felony counts Tuesday. He also said this, which doesn't necessarily seem like something a prosecutor would typically say, but again, this isn't a typical case. But listen to this. While there has been much testimony about the defendant's abuse of drugs and alcohol, Ultimately, this case was not just about addiction, a disease that haunts families across the United States, including Hunter Biden's family. Greg Kelly, host of Greg Kelly Reports, starts us off. All right. Hunter Biden guilty. But so what? All right. So what? Look, you think this is justice? This is yet another scheme to help and protect Democrats. It is another play to help Joe Biden get reelected. I don't know what they owe this guy, but what happened today is weird, all right, totally. There are so many things you could charge Hunter Biden with, but this gun thing, you know what he was convicted of, right? Let me see that form. Uh, he said no when they asked him, are you addicted to drugs? That's it, that, that's what he was convicted of. So if he put yes instead of no, well, There would have been no crime. He wouldn't have been charged. Is that why they spent all this money? Is that why they went through all this trouble, right? A big trial? No. A big part of this was to legitimize in their mind, and they think in our mind, oh, this legitimizes the case against Trump, right? A Democrat, a Democrat was prosecuted, a prominent Democrat. That means everything that's happening to President Trump and his recent conviction is somehow valid. No, it's not. Absolutely not. But that's what happened. I know it. Now, these are the prosecutors who brought the case against uh, Hunter Biden. Uh, I call them henchmen, Joe Biden's henchmen. You can also call them, I don't know, maybe Joe Biden's deputy campaign managers, because these are the same guys who wanted Joe Biden, uh, his son, to go free. Remember, all the way back in August, Hunter Biden shows up in court and there is this crazy convoluted plea deal that will keep Hunter Biden out of out of trouble, basically, for the rest of his life. The judge was like, what the heck is this all about? Uh, She would have none of it. They were exposed. So they had to kind of go back to the drawing board and prosecute Hunter. Uh, But that was a really fun moment. Do you remember? We come on the air with breaking news. After several dramatic and unexpected hours of high courtroom drama, today the plea deal agreement between Hunter Biden and the Department of Justice has just fallen apart. A routine courtroom hearing, it seemed, ended with a big plea deal in disarray. Hunter Biden pleading not guilty after his plea deal was put on hold. Yeah, I remember it, and that amazing judge was like, this makes no sense. It doesn't make sense for the prosecution. That Do you know what you're signing up for here? Anyway, 
They had to go home. They were humiliated. And, uh, well, we all knew what it was about. Again, that's Newsmax host Greg Kelly. More on Hunter in a moment with Congressman Byron Donalds and others. But only hours after the president's son was convicted of lying on an application to buy a gun, a Form 4473, Greg mentioned the form, the president, Joe Biden, spoke at a Moms Demand Action for Gun Safety event. To drive and coordinate government and nationwide effort to reduce gun violence in America, that's why we did it, to send a clear, a clear message about how important this issue is to me, to you, and to the entire country. Folks. His son was just convicted of one of the things that they're fighting against. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds weighing in on American agenda. Congressman, is the DOJ fair? Is that what this proves? No, it doesn't, because you still have a situation where David Weiss, before this entire scandal got blown wide open, David Weiss had actually cut the sweetest deal known to anybody going through the criminal justice system. And if it wasn't for a judge and Republicans on the Oversight Oversight Committee actually exposing all of the things that had happened that Hunter Biden had been doing, we don't believe we would be here today. Secondarily, there are still uh, the the tax evasion charges that David Weiss let expire on purpose. He let them expire. Merrick Garland knew all this was going on, and they did not bat an eye. The only reason we know about the tax evasion is because of the work of the Oversight Committee. And then the third thing, the biggest thing overall, is that the Biden campaign lied about this laptop. The laptop was true the entire time. The FBI knew the laptop truly existed, and they lied to the American people. They covered it up. You have Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, who led 51 intelligence officials to lie to the American people, calling it Russian disinformation. The press covered that up. The media, obviously, you know what they did. Joe Biden's campaign lied to the American people, and the FBI and Maine Justice basically acted like there was nothing to see until Joe uh, Hunter Biden had to have his day in court. So we're far from having Maine Justice and the FBI cleaned up. Uh, frankly, in this situation, yes, Hunter Biden broke the law, and he's been held accountable. Congressman, I want to go back to President Biden's speech just moments ago, again, at this gun safety annual event where he didn't mention Hunter at all. He did not take any questions. That is not a surprise. But he is standing there nationally broadcast talking about tougher restrictions on purchasing guns, illegal purchase of a firearm hours after his son was convicted on very similar charges. That certainly smacks of hypocrisy. Well, two things. One, I think they're trying to send him out there to talk about this to cover up what actually happened in the courtroom in Delaware dealing with his own son. Number two, you're correct. Hunter Biden broke federal law when it comes to buying firearms. Number three, if Joe Biden wanted to do this, how come he didn't do it when Nancy Pelosi was speaker and when Chuck Schumer was Senate majority leader? During the first two years of his disastrous presidency, he had control of the both, both houses of Congress. He could have done this then. He did not. He chose not to. They didn't go through with any of this. So it, now he wants to use it for campaign purposes to prove that he's going to be tough. This is all a lie. Once again, it's another political sham by Joe Biden and his team. He's not interested in doing anything. He's just trying to get people to vote for him. But if you look at his record as president, he has been the master of disaster when it comes to everything in this country. He deserves to be defeated on November 5th. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds on Newsmax. And now that the truth about the laptop is out there, the so-called Russian disinformation that may have actually helped reshape the 2020 election is all on the table. Trump attorney and previous advisor to the Trump campaign, Christina Bob, is one of many calling for further investigations into the laptop. What do you think will happen, if anything, or is this just Biden's DOJ here going to say this is just how we want to use the laptop and no more? I think this is Biden's DOJ saying this is just how we want to use the laptop and no more. I mean, quite honestly, I don't think Biden's DOJ really even wanted to use it for this, but they had to because everybody was making such a big deal about it and pushing the fact that Hunter Biden and nobody from the Biden family had been held accountable for the many crimes that we can now see that they have likely committed and should be tried for, but yet they haven't. And so they come up with this 
uh, basically a slap on the wrist. Yes, it's a felony count, and there could be uh, <laughs> substantial penalties, but usually for a first offender, they're not as severe as the maximum. Um, but we haven't seen them held accountable, and then they're hiding behind this, oh, look it, we got a conviction, this is great. Okay, well, now do the real crimes. Now let's mm -hmm. take a real look at the laptop. Let's take a real look at the information that the House committees have uh, have shown us all the and interviews. Let's, let's charge the real times. Exactly. Yeah. Tony Bobolinsky, Devin Archer, um, all those folks. Newsmax host Bianca De La Garza with Trump attorney Christina Bob on Newsline, who said, yes, it's a felony. And yes, there could be substantial penalties, but usually not as severe for first offenders, which Hunter is. And that is the big question and the big discussion today. What will Hunter's sentence be? What will the punishment be and how severe? Former acting attorney general Matthew Whitaker isn't expecting much to happen. For more, let's bring in acting attorney general for Donald Trump and senior fellow at the American Cornerstone Institute, Matt Whitaker. Uh, Matt, great to be with you tonight. Good to see you. Uh, do you think that Hunter Biden never sees the inside of a jail cell? There's no way, especially on on this charge, you know, these gun charges are most likely not going to bring the most um, jail time when he is ultimately sentenced. I'm watching this tax case very carefully out in California because I think that's actually a more important case and, and more significant because it brings in some of the things you were talking about, the Biden corruption and, and, and that narrative. But remember, this is the case, all of these cases, they tried to sweep them under the rug. The Department of Justice tried to negotiate a plea agreement with a misdemeanor and a deferred judgment, uh, all for probation and no jail time. And so the fact that Judge Noriega blew that up when she realized that he was going to get prospective uh, criminal immunity uh, was extraordinary. So Rob, I just I, I watched this case, uh, watched this trial, um, but I, one point you made early in your monologue was so important. There was no argument over what the jury instruction should be. What he was charged with wasn't a question. It is so different, and the, there, there is no equivalency between this case against Hunter Biden and what Donald Trump just went through in New York City. Yeah, Matt, I, I want you to put on your just your political analyst hat, if you could, for me, because I think the White House was caught off guard today. Uh, KJP canceled her afternoon press briefing, which would have happened right after the verdict. And then Joe Biden unexpectedly got on a plane and went back to Wilmington, Delaware. It's Matt. I, look, I love time off in the summer, too. It's Tuesday. All right. Why is he going to Wilmington, Delaware? It's because what happened to his son today. I, I don't think they were expecting this. What do you think this means for Joe politically and that debate that happens in 16 days? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think he is a little bit rattled by it. And I and it was I don't I don't know why it would be unexpected. I mean, if they believe so much in the system of justice and the uh, righteous outcomes of, of juries, then they should have fully expected this because there was no doubt that the violation of the law was there in spades. Uh, and so. I don't know. Uh, ultimately, I think this, you know, Joe is probably uh, emotionally uh, affected. But, you know, he also just came back from Europe. And and I would expect that his, you know, probably at that age, um, he's probably tired. And that speech today, uh, that was hard to watch because he was not firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I just I, again, I don't understand the White House. It's it's a gun control event. You've got a son who, who literally just hours before is convicted of illegally owning a, a firearm. And they they force Joe to go to this event like that's going to be a sign of bravery. Um, back to Hunter and what this judge does in Delaware. Um, are we looking at like fines and probation? And then I was reading the statute today and it said any time over the next 120 days we could see sentencing, which put, well, that puts us right into the middle of October if, if the judge waits that long. When does that happen? Yeah, so there's a, the, the pre-sentencing uh, investigation is going to be done, and then there will be a recommendation. And obviously, uh, even though they're only advisory now, there are um, sentencing guidelines that are still applicable um, uh, under U.S. law. And what you will see is that formula, because he has no criminal history, uh, and he, and it's, a you know, again, a, the violation, I think, is 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 fairly low. He's probably looking at zero to six months or a or a term of probation. I think that's probably what she will give him. But remember, when he's if he's convicted and sentenced for the tax charges, those felonies, he will be a convicted felon, and all of a sudden he is in a different criminal history, and he would have a more significant penalty because of that criminal history. 
Thank you and thank you, Matt Whitaker and Rob Finnerty. Everything you wanted to know right there. Hunter's punishment will likely not be significant, but being a convicted felon could affect his punishment in the upcoming tax fraud trial, which as of now is scheduled for September, and that'll be here before you know it as fast as time is going by and with all that we have going on. Matt Whitaker said it. I've heard Alan Dershowitz and others say they think the tax case is more significant than the gun case. Even though the gun case is a felony, there will certainly be a lot of discussion about this throughout the day and tonight. Meanwhile, what about Donald Trump's case and his sentencing? House Republicans are moving forward with their investigation into the Justice Department and New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg. The two of them, you know, together, conspiring, this following Trump's conviction in New York. Late last night, the Justice Department sent a letter to House Republicans that it has found no emails between DOJ leadership and District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office on the investigation into Trump. I don't know how much you can believe an agency when they're self-policing, right? This is a an assistant attorney in the DOJ that sent the letter to the House Republicans. And let's not forget how all of this political madness is taking the media and most of America's attention off of the border, except for me. The other day, I played this clip of President Trump at his rally in Las Vegas. For three and a half years, the people of Nevada have had a... Front row seat to Joe Biden's evil and criminal obliteration of our southern border. It was criminal what he's done. Did you see the other day he came out with a little plan? Oh, let's make it a little bit tougher because he's getting killed in the poll. We're leading here by like 12 points. You know that. On Newsmax's Wake Up America, Iowa Senator Joni Ernst blasted Biden's executive order on the border as nothing but talk. Does this executive order do anything to really solve the situation at the border? Well, it doesn't solve it. Certainly yeah. it doesn't solve it. What President Biden has done mm -hmm. is put himself in a position where he can now talk about it and say he has done something. But bottom line, I don't care what he throws out there in an yeah. executive order. It doesn't matter one iota unless he enforces it. And you will not see President Biden enforce mm -hmm. this. Um, so it gives political cover to Biden and the Democrats. They know they're in a very precarious position when it comes to an open border to our South. Uh, Republicans have the answers. President Donald Trump, Trump obviously had the border under control. We need him in office again so that we can actually control the border. And obviously Iowa is not a border state, but you've come on our show before and talked about how every state now is a border state. What are you hearing from the people in your state? Why do they care so much about this border and, and the need for it to be secure? Yes, I travel river to river every single year in mm -hmm. Iowa, all 99 counties. And what I hear at my town hall and I'm still hearing immigration, inflation, mm -hmm. top two issues. It matters. Yeah. Fentanyl matters in Iowa. It's taking away our youth. Um, it is killing them. It is destroying lives with the, uh, the trafficking of young human beings. Um, how many Hundreds of thousands of young people have been trafficked over the border, at, at least 80,000 that the administration cannot account for. So it is an issue to Iowans. They care very deeply about this. It impacts their daily lives. And President Biden, he's not going to do a darn thing about it. That is Iowa Republican Senator Joni Ernst on Wake Up America, who, by the way, endorsed Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over President Trump in the primaries. And listen to this word salad from impeached Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas on ABC's This Week. What has the impact been? How many migrants have been turned away between those ports of entry? Martha, we're at a very early stage. Implementation, as you noted, has just begun. Uh, our intent is to really change the risk calculus of individuals before they leave their countries of origin and incentivize them to use the lawful pathways that we have made available to them and keep them out of the hands of exploitative smugglers. It's early, the signs are positive. Our personnel have done an extraordinary job in implementing a very big shift in how we operate on the southern border. That is our Homeland Security Secretary. They hope, they want, 
They incentivize them to use lawful pathways. No numbers, no statistics. He doesn't have a clue. You remember the time Ted Cruz asked him about the uh, cartel bracelets? That is just priceless. And what about the border czar, Kamala Harris? Remember, she is the border czar. Why isn't anyone still asking the border czar any questions about the border? The vice president is in Charlotte, North Carolina today with longtime Democrat Mayor Vi Lyles, a deep blue Democrat. When I was working there not that long ago, she wouldn't even talk to the local conservative news talk station that I worked at. Not Kamala Harris, but the mayor. Maybe, maybe someone in Charlotte TV will step up today and ask the border czar about the border. Wow. Like maybe... As the borders are, do you plan to ever actually visit the border? That would be for starters. Big news in Florida today, too, and I'm sure Governor Ron DeSantis will be responding if he hasn't already. A federal judge struck down the law that blocked gender-affirming care for transgender minors and severely restricted gender treatment for adults, calling the law unconstitutional. Judge Robert Hinkle said the state went too far when it barred transgender minors from being prescribed puberty blockers and hormone treatments with their parents' permission. He also stopped the state from requiring transgender adults only receive treatment from a doctor and not from a nurse or other medical practitioners. Wall Street opened in the green this morning with the Dow Industrials up about 200 points after today's CPI report, that's the Consumer Price Index, a big, big inflation gauge, showed prices unchanged from last month, which is good news, but up another 3.3% from a year ago when consumer prices were up like 4% from the year before that. And the Federal Reserve finishes its two-day policy meeting today. They'll have an announcement this afternoon that could either keep the rally on the market going or Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, could say something to kill the buzz like he always does. Keep up with all of the news all day long on Newsmax, Newsmax Plus, and at Newsmax.com. Make sure you're streaming on the new Newsmax Plus. If you're not, simply go to NewsmaxPlus.com, get signed up. You can also get a free trial. It includes all of your favorite shows, all your favorite hosts, Greg Kelly Reports, Rob Schmidt Tonight, Wake Up America, The Record with Greta Van Susteren. By the way, a happy belated birthday, Greta. Yesterday was Greta Van Susteren's birthday. Fantastic analysis from people like former acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker, uh, Professor Alan Dershowitz, Judge Napolitano, and many others. NewsmaxPlus.com. Check it out. This is the Newsmax Daily Podcast. Thank you so much for checking it out. I'm Tony Marino. Enjoy the rest of your hump day and keep on. Fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.